Hi, I'm Jim Gehring from Brown Tool Auctions. What we have here are three planes of the type that are known as transitional planes. The reason these are called transitional is that the beginning of the 1800s, planes were made entirely out of wood, and pretty much by the end of the 1800s, they were shifted over to making them entirely out of metal, cast iron or sometimes bronze or brass. And in between, there was a period of time called a transition during which a lot of planes were made with a wooden body and a wooden sole, but with a metal uh, cutter holding mechanism mounted on top of it. Um, this is done largely because a lot of uh, carpenters, traditionalists, thought that a wooden sole gave you less friction and gave you a smoother ride when you were uh, you know, pushing it over a piece of wood. So there are, there are a lot of transitionals around. A lot of them aren't really worth very much because uh, they were pretty common and they tended to get kind of beat up over the years. But I've selected three here that are kind of different to show you. This first one is made by the Union Tool Company. Union Tool Company was one of the main competitors of Stanley. Um, a lot of their tools are pretty much identical to Stanley's except the, the, you know, a, few, a few minor differences. One of the big differences was Union Tool use this type of special blade adjustment. It's called a vertical post adjustment. Um, and whereas the Stanley adjustment had a, vertic had a horizontally mounted knob to, to adjust the depth of the blade, um, the, vertical, the vertical post adjustment that was used by Union Tool, as you see, is mounted vertically to the body. And you, by moving it up and down like this, you can adjust the angle and the depth of the blade. Other than that, this is identical to a Stanley plane, except that the Stanley plane of this type was known as the number 37. This, because it was made by Union Tool, is the X37, which indicates that it's got this special uh, uh, vertical post adjustment in it. So it's a lot, uh, it's a lot less common than the Stanley version. Um, so it sits, and as you can see, it's in really nice condition. The wood's got most of its original finish on it. It's not all beat up the way a lot of transitionals tend to be. So this is generally more, more rare, more collectible, and more valuable than an equivalent Stanley number 37. What we have here is a jointer plane. The jointer planes were the longest planes that were made. They were made in order to true up the edges of uh, two planks so that they could be uh, fitted together with a nice smooth joint. So they needed to be really long so they could, you know, you get a nice even cut along the edge of the blade, uh, along the edge of the, uh, of the plank. Um, this one was made by Gage Tool Company. Gage was a company that was subsequently uh, purchased by Stanley, and then you, so then you wound up with Stanley Gage planes. But it was originally independent. They were out of Vineland, New Jersey, and they had a very different type of uh, blade cut, blade holding mechanism. The Stanley version has got what they called the cap iron would go in here and uh, would hold the blade down. But the, uh, the, the gauge method is a much more elaborate device here that holds the blade in place and has got a built-in uh, uh, adjuster um, to adjust the depth of the blade. So there's a, a more elaborate gauge, at least, thought it was a more accurate uh, blade adjustment mechanism. And again, Stanley is, was their, uh, their tendency they eventually just bought the company and started introducing it themselves. Rather than compete with them, they bought them. This is what Stanley would do all the time. The other thing you always find on a gauge plane is that they've got this uh, mechanism for mounting the, uh, the tote or the handle on an iron plate that then is screwed down into the blade, onto the body of the plane. So this is a gauge uh, joiner. This one is by Stanley. But it's not a production model. It comes out of the Stanley model shop, which was sort of the legendary think tank of Stanley where they tried out new designs. And, um, also, they would buy competitors' uh, tools and take them all apart to see if there was anything that they could use themselves. Or like with Gage, eventually they would just buy the company. This one is marked uh, on the toe by uh, Justice Trout. It's got his uh, patent date. Justice Trout was the legendary patent king of Stanley. He was a German immigrant who worked for Stanley for his entire career, had literally hundreds of patents. Um, you can tell this one is kind of handmade. It's got this little lever here, which adjusts the blade. Um, it was the subject of the patent. This leather lever was in fact later used by Stanley in what they called the Liberty Bell series of plates. And again, it's just a, a different type of mechanism for adjusting the depth and the, of the cutter. Um, 
In this particular case, the entire mechanism was made out of cast bronze when they originally, when they eventually adapted this to the Liberty Bell series of planes, they made it out of iron instead because it was uh, obviously cheaper to make and made for a more uh, uh, economical plane. So other than that, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's in really nice condition as you would expect because it was never used. It was a prototype. Here are three, uh, like I say, you'll find a lot of transitionals around. Um, but these three are kind of special and uh, all will be included in our auction on October 30th.